Good day, everyone, and thank you for joining us in this presentation. I will be taking you through AstroQuiz 2024, how it works, what is expected, and what you will be doing. So let's start straight away with all the dates, which I know you are very curious about and also need to do your planning. So let's look at when the registrations will open. 15 February is the date. This competition, of course, is only for grade seven learners. And the closing date for registrations is four weeks later on the 15th of March. And by the way, registration is free or, and the entry is free, in other words. So let's go to some more dates here. We will be sending you a link and an entry or an entry form for registration. Uh, we will be emailing it to all the schools who participated in 2023. If you are a new school in 2024, let's say you didn't participate in 23, even if you did in 2022, let's assume you are new, please send us your information, your email address, your school name and your province. And I will provide you at the end of this presentation with the necessary email address. So here are the dates that I was talking about. So as you now know, AstroQ is only for grade seven learners. Round one will happen on the 11th of April. All the um, quizzes will be 30 minutes long and they all consist of multiple choice questions. So round one, 11 April. Education training session will happen on the 25th of April to teach you and show you how to register for round two onwards. And here are all the dates. I'm not gonna read all of them. You are most welcome to watch the recording again, or you can take a picture. There are your dates. If you are interested in any of our other Olympiads, you will see that on a separate presentation, which will also be made available on the platform. Now let's look at logistical arrangements. All the learners will be writing at school. And you as the educator will either invigilate yourself or you will get other invigilators and you will book venues in time, depending on how many learners you are enrolling. So if we look at some more arrangements here for round one, we will be emailing you the paper. It's only two pages long. And to save costs, of course, you can print it back to back. And it will be in your inbox, eight o'clock in the morning on the day which the learners are writing. If for any reason you need it earlier, you will kindly send us an email and make such an arrangement. You may let the learners take the quiz anytime during the day on the 11th of April that suits you in your specific school circumstances. The day thereafter, we will be sending you the memo as well as a template where you will record all the results. So again, it will be in your inbox eight o'clock in the morning. As I've mentioned, you will be marking round one and then you will return all the results to us on the provided template before or on the 16th of April. And there is your email address. It's very short and sweet. It just says Astro, short for astronomy, or Astro quiz if you wish, at sasta.ac.za. Now, why do we say only grade seven learners? Because many of you might be teaching other grades as well. The reason being that astronomy is part of the grade seven syllabus. And this is also to spark learners' interest in astronomy and thus science prior to them going to high school with the hope that they will take physics or life science as they go along in high school. And then of course, there's an opportunity for them to, start to shine either individually in round one or in team format, and I'll explain that. So in round one, you as the teacher, and you will see that on the entry forms, you've got a choice between either enrolling all of your learners in grade seven or the whole class, maybe you're responsible for one class only, or 
you can already divide them in teams of four, which means four learners will sit together and answer the quiz as a team. You can have as many teams of, as, of four as you wish. There's no limitations on either individual learners or writing this quiz individually or do it as a team. For round two, this is where things change. You are then allowed to have a maximum of two teams of four learners each. In other words, eight learners maximum. You are, of course, allowed only to enroll one team, should you wish to do so. And you will choose your, let's assume, two teams of four learners each and enroll them. We are not going to do that for you. You will choose them from the learner's achievement in round one, who are your best learners, and you will take it from there. So after round two, if you go back to the page where we showed you all the dates, you will attend a training on the 25th of April on how to register the learners for round two. From round two onwards, we will then mark the papers or at least it will be online, we will do the marking and we will then inform you who progress either to round three, which is the provincial round, or round four, which is the national round. So what does the paper look like? City multiple choice questions. It's available in English. And of course, from round two onwards, these questions will come from a question bank and they've got 30 minutes to complete the quiz. Just to put your mind at ease, the question bank means this. For round two, all the learners will receive questions of the same level of difficulty. Round three and four, obviously, as you go to the higher rounds, the more difficult the paper will become. So rounds two to four, as I've mentioned, is online. What do you need for this? You only need one smartphone or a tablet. Either of the two will do. Even if you have two teams for round two, you only need one of those. You don't need two. You don't need four for each team member. Remember, they are participating in a team. Um, and the, it, let's say you do have two teams, they can take the quiz one after the other. No need for two of these devices. So the training, as I mentioned, I'm repeating it, 25 April, 2.30 to 3.30. Usually it doesn't last an hour, but we do allow enough time for people who might have questions. And as you can see, it's after school hours. I've explained the question back. If we have learners in a tie or schools in a tie at whichever round, we, we will make the judgment call and see if there's a need to have a tiebreaker session. Usually the tiebreakers consist of 10 questions and we will then let the specific schools know who needs to do a tiebreaker. And obviously we will inform you of the results afterwards. Right. Then what material will you be using uh, to prepare your learners? First of all, the syllabus content of the astronomy in grade seven. Secondly, there's a booklet called Your Guide to the Universe, as well as previous papers. And both of them, the guide as well as previous papers, are available on our website. And here is the address for you. Again, you can take a picture so that you can type it in and download it there. Before I carry on, one more thing. We still have a few of these booklets in our storeroom. And it will be a matter of on a first come first serve basis. If you would like to have some of these booklets, we can courier it to you. So you are most welcome to send us an email requesting these and we will then send it to you via courier. Otherwise you can download it. If the learners has got their own um, computers or laptops, either at, in, at school or at home, they're most welcome to download it and then start preparing. We also have some certificates and prizes. Each and every learner in every round will get an electronic participation certificate. We will be emailing that to you as the educator. The provincial winning team will receive print, a printed certificate. 
And when I say apprentice certificate, I mean for each of the four members of that team. It's not a certificate per team. Each of the four learners will have something in their hand. The same goes for the national winners. And there we issue the printed certificate to the top three teams. Prizes, that will go to the provincial top three winning teams as well as the national top three winning teams. And here's the promised email address. Very simple. You've seen it earlier on in my presentation. It's astro at sasta.ac.za. Please note the AC. It's not co.za. AC stands for academic. Please make sure that you type the AC. Otherwise, it will not reach us. And we are really looking forward to your entries for this year. Thank you very much.